Okay, so we are going to talk about uh, support vector machine that is, by the way, uh, another uh, classification algorithm. So first of all, a short recap as usual. Before going through SVN, what is the purpose of a classification algorithm? In general, and then if you can give me some examples of the employment <coughs> of uh, classification algorithms uh, in uh, information retrieval tasks. Yeah, so the purpose of classification algorithm is to... Recognize the class of... Uh, okay. To classify in particular one of the documents in the collection, right? Good. So why? For what purpose? Yeah, one example. Information versus spam. Okay, good. So as an example, if you have, say, mail, which is maybe the most uh, uh, suitable example in this particular case, and you have mail that has been classified as a spam, and mail that has been classified as a non-spam, you want to see a new mail and to assign a category in order to uh, suggest to the user whether this new mail is a spam or not a spam. Uh, you can even use classifier as an example to recognize language of a specific document because as we saw uh, in our first classes, uh, there are some language specific tools that you have to apply in order to improve the performance. As an example, can you give me an example of possible language specific tools? Okay, are stop words, stop words for all the language uh, in the universe? Not at all. They are stop words for English, stop words for Italian, stop words for whatever. Okay, so just to give you an example, stop words uh, uh, are for a given language. So maybe you would apply a, a classification algorithm in order to identify the language in a given document, and then you would apply the most uh, appropriate uh, stop word list, just to give you an example. But can you give me uh, two other examples that actually we will explore uh, in the next classes about uh, the use of uh, classification algorithm, possible use of classification algorithm? Let's think about it. I mean, how does Google or any other search engine make money? With ads. Good. And do you think that ads is a general purpose ads for all the people respectively from who they are or there are some uh, algorithms that classify the user and then provides advertising on the basis of this classification, okay? So as an example, advertising is, requires, as a building block, classification algorithms. Hmm? And also uh, uh, recommendation systems that to some extent are connected to advertisement are another example of possible employment of classification algorithms. Okay, so, good. So, we saw how to apply Rocchio, you saw with Luca, what is the, what is the idea of Rocchio? To, to, to compute what? What is this? The centroid, and what is this centroid? Is a prototype, I would say, for the class, right? So then the next question is to see how much the new point that you want to classify, the new vector that you want to classify, is close to what centroids, and assign the class on the basis of this computation. Good, so more in general, what you do is you, a linear classifier, requires the identification of a line a point, a line, a plane, an hyperplane, 
okay, which allows you to distinguish among uh, two regions, above or below this line, above or below this plane, okay, for, the two, for two classes. So basically what you do, you identify one point in this particular case. Everything that is on the right when be will be classified with class C. What is on the left will be classified with uh, uh, C minus or C whatever. Okay? Good. And this is true also for a line in the two-dimensional case. Again, the concept is absolutely the same above the line, below the line, or again uh, with an hyperplane or with a plane in this particular case, above the plane and below the plane. So what is the purpose of a linear classifier? The purpose of a linear classifier is simply to identify this line, this plane, this hyperplane, this point, which allows you to separate one class to the other class. Okay? That's the main purpose. OK, in, in general, we, we can mm, think about a number of possible alternatives. And, uh, but in general, we can classify two, two main uh, type of learning algorithms. Simple learning algorithm in which basically you have um, a linear pass, namely you observe once all the uh, elements in the training set and you often in, in, in one single pass and you came up uh, with this plane okay and so this is basically the example we saw in uh, 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 those are the learning algorithms for vector space classification the example we saw are knife bias uh, rocky okay and then uh, are an example of this kind of algorithms. Otherwise, you can have iterative algorithms. Namely, you have to iterate over the points in order to figure out uh, the proper uh, parameter for the classification algorithm. Okay? And in general, I would we can say that the best performing learning algorithm usually requires this second class of uh, approach, this second approach. Anyway, this is not always true. Okay? There is a kind of trade-off. It depends on, the, on, on some uh, elements that you have to consider, okay? Okay, many of our uh, classifier are linear ones, namely naive bias, Rocchio, the logistic regression, and um, you have basically different ways or mechanism to separate the two classes, namely to identify the hyperplane, uh, the question is to what extent we can employ non-linear classifier in order to improve the performance. Okay, what is important here is that even if in general those non-linear classifier allows you to get uh, better performance, why? They are more flexible in the way they let you split them on Which no, no linear or no linear, right, because in general you cannot claim that uh, the two classes can be separated, right? Uh, you have uh, plus and minus, uh, x and uh, uh, circles, whatever. In general you cannot claim that there will be a line, there will be an hyperplane allowing you to separate those two classes. So those are in general more powerful. However, due to the iterative nature, they are in general more complex and if the two classes can be I would say uh, separated, namely there is a linear boundary. Maybe you can apply those, the, the linear algorithm uh, in a very effective way. Okay? So, if possible, what is the first approach that you would follow in order to apply the algorithm, one of the algorithms? Would you start with an argument to see what happens or would you do something before? Okay, there is a general rule uh, that seems to be forgotten them by most of us. Okay? The first rule is uh, try to have uh, a raw understanding on the, of the data set. Okay, have a look to the data set when possible. Clearly, if the data set 
is a, a, a vector with uh, millions of entries or thousands of entries, this is not possible. But if you can have a suitable representation of the data set uh, in maybe three-dimensional space or even uh, higher dimensions, but something that can be, can give you insight on the structure of the data, observing the data, visualizing those data, this is the first step that you have to do. Because if you see two points that can be easily separated by an hyperplane, maybe that's the main solution. Can you give me an example of something that is not easily separated by an hyperplane? A very easy one. Okay, maybe the... If you have this, this is something that uh, cannot be separated by a line, right? You will always has, have some error. You need some decision region, region that is something like this, maybe. Or we will see later on, maybe you can accept uh, some uh, errors. So even if maybe you have this situation, Okay, assuming that this cannot be separated by a line, maybe you, you can accept this misclassification for the sake of simplicity. Okay, so you can accept a, a trade-off. You use a very simple linear classifier, even if you know since the beginning that there will be some error, but you accept those errors. Okay, those are the two main options. Okay, in general, it's not true that uh, non-linear classifier will perform better than linear ones. It depends on the structure of the data. And in general, it's true that the non-linear classifier will require more effort in order to build the classifier. Okay, so what are we talking about uh, today? We are talking about this uh, support uh, vector uh, machine, which is a kind of state-of-the-art classifier. Um, for classification, uh, both linear and nonlinear. Okay, so the idea is that uh, with respect to those lights, that will give you a kind of uh, uh, formal proof of the SVM. I do like more the approach provided by uh, the name of this uh, professor is Victor Lavrenko. So I'm sorry, in the other slides that <laughs> unfortunately I cannot show you. There, is the there are the credits, but please, uh, in, in, in the slides that I will provide you, I, I will make the credit to this Victor Lavrenko. And there is, a, to me, a very nice intuition to why SVM will work. But first of all, we need to introduce this concept, then we will formalize it, and then we will see, as we observed uh, in this example, what can we do when the classes are not actually Mm, separable, so we have to accept some error and we have to trade off between performance and errors. And then we will have a quick discussion, hopefully, on which classifier should I use for my problem. Okay, so introduction. Um, the effectiveness of classifier uh, has improved a lot in the years. I mean, nowadays, everybody is talking about uh, uh, deep learning or uh, reinforcement learning, okay? It's not anymore the case that we have all, only neural networks. We, we, we are proceeding fast. Uh, in general, there are uh, a lot of new generation of state-of-the-art classifiers, such as support vector machine, uh, decision trees, uh, uh, regularize the logistic regression, a number of alternatives, okay? Um, and in terms of information retrieval, we are interested for the uh, example we made before on those uh, classification algorithms. Okay. SVM works as KNN and the linear classifier with vectors. Okay, so we are in the vector space. 
namely documents, can be represented as vectors. What did we do in order to transform documents into vectors? Can you give me an example? One, the first one you have in mind? The huh? The and that's not a vector, right? I mean, I mean, yeah, you use CF, idea, sorry, you use CF IDF in order to build, a, as an example, a vector representation of the documents, right? Okay, good. So you basically have a weight for each term in the collection of documents. And so you represent this document as a vector with that weight. It can be simply the frequency of the term in the collection, term frequency. It can be the term frequency and the inverse document frequency. And so you can collect, you can uh, basically uh, work both on the documents and on the query applying uh, different techniques. And so you have this idea of, uh, remember, DDD, QQQ, depending on what you do in order to transform the documents and the query into a vector. Okay? Good. Um, what is the main difference of uh, this algorithm with the algorithm we saw, uh, we saw before? The main difference is that we, have, we want a large margin classifier. Okay? So we want basically to define a region that is as big as possible that separates what? The two classes of documents. That, that's the whole idea. Okay? This region, let's see in this example. Okay, let's see in this example what are possible, uh, possible region. Okay? This is an absolutely okay classifier. And what is the region that separates the two classes? It's linear in this case. So it will be something like this. Okay? Because, okay, this is on the boundary. Because if I move, okay, this is the, 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 the region that uh, I will identify. So, if I'm in the middle of this region, I have some kind of uncertainty. Uncertainty. Well, let's see what happens if, as an example, I'll take this separation line. Okay? Now the region is this and then. And you see. B and A, the sides of B is bigger than the size, of, the size of A, okay? So there is a matter of finding this separation region in order to have a large, this is the margin, margin classifier. Why a margin? Because uh, if something is above this margin is of class circle. If something is below this margin is of class uh, uh, X, class cross, if something is in the margin, maybe you cannot uh, choose whether it's one or the other, or you can apply this line, this hyperline, hyperplane, this line in this particular case, to see above or below this line in order to classify. It's up to you to choose, okay? Okay, so basically we are looking for a line which allows us to maximize the sides of this margin. Does this make sense to everybody? Okay. So we, we, we have to find the hyperplane, so the decision boundary, that is maximally far from all the points in the training data. So basically, if we identify the margin and uh, we take the hyperplane in the middle between the margin, uh, clearly this is uh, maximizing the distance. Okay? Assuming that the margin has been already maximized. Because basically you will have half the distance to the positive class and half the distance to the negative class. Okay? Good. Okay, as we observed before, that's fantastic. If the two classes 
are separable. If they are not, we have to do some tricks in order to make uh, it working. Okay? Oh, and so we have to discount some point uh, as uh, either outliers or noise. Okay, so th those are the possible options. And again, what we are looking for, we are looking for the option that have the largest margin. Let's see this binary classification problem. So basically we have uh, circles and triangles. Okay. The boundary, so the separator is uh, this line. One possible boundary is this line. This is actually the boundary that maximizes the margin. As we saw here, you can have different margins. Okay. So basically, we are looking for this uh, line separator. Okay. Why is this the maximum margin decision hyperplane? Because it maximizes the distance between the points of the two classes. Okay. And this is completely identified by the vectors on the, um, on the margin lines, which are indeed named the support vectors. Okay? Because those are the only ones that define the, that hyperplane. Okay? And so we will have some, a question we have to answer is, uh, how are we going to compute to identify those vector and to compute this hyperplane? So first question, how to identify those vectors. Second question, how from those vectors compute the hyperplane? Okay. Good. Notice that due to the fact by vectors we can identify the hyperplane, the classification algorithm, namely the classifier, is completely defined by the set of support vectors. Okay, that's why we call it support vector machine. Good. Clearly, now let's, uh, let's have a look to this picture. Are you more confident on the classification of a point that is here or a point that is here? The idea is that R match is the distance of the point that I want to classify to the decision region and to the hyperplane, as more confident I am about the right classification. OK? This is the main idea. OK. How much closer I am to this region, as less confident I am about the classification, the output of the classification. OK, that's the idea. So points that uh, near the decision surface are uncertain classification decision. Okay, possibly because I have overfitting. So clearly, as much data I see, as better is this, the result of the classifier. But, uh, classifier, but this is a general rule. OK. But what is interesting is that, irrespectively from the data set, a classifier with a large margin makes uh, no low certainty classification decision. Why? Because the distance is very high between the two classes. Okay. And so this is the purpose, actually, is to find out what is the hyperplane, the decision boundary, that will maximize um, this area. Okay. Good. So as you see here, you have a number of uh, possible alternatives in, in this particular case. Um, um, what we are looking for and is we are looking for this uh, fat separator, namely this region that is as big as possible according to the picture. Please keep in mind this picture and remind that we have different options. Okay? Uh, while in this picture all, those, all the options are more or less the same uh, 
uh, fatness. Actually, in this picture, it should be clear that you, depending on your choice, the wideness of this region changes dramatically. Okay, and we want to find out a unique solution. So the purpose here is to find out a unique solution. Okay. <coughs> okay, in general, our uh, uh, hyperplane would uh, have uh, this form, right? It's a plane. So all the documents here, X is all the documents, solving this equation will basically define the hyperplane, okay? All the points solving this equation will basically define the hyperplane. So what, what is something that we are missing now? We are missing W and B. So we have to find out W and B in order to define an hyperplane that will make the separation between the two classes as big as possible. This is the main purpose of uh, SVN. Okay? Okay, in the literature, this is clearly, this is an hyperplane, so depending on the literature, you could have uh, different, uh, say, um, definition, but the concept is uh, always the same. Uh, th th that's only a matter of notation. Okay, so let's consider this example. Okay, um, see some alternatives. A, we have to separate the two classes. Is this possible? Okay, looking at the picture is obviously uh, possible and it will be a line that will go over there. So okay, what kind of strategy could you use in order to identify this line? Basically, we have to find a line in this particular case because we are in the two-dimensional space. So a line that will make a maximum the distance between two points of the two classes to this line. Okay, that, 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 that's the whole, uh, the whole idea. Okay. So this is a possible line. And uh, now the question is how to compute this line. Again, if you go further in these, uh, in these uh, slides, uh, there is a formal definition, uh, uh, but uh, I do like more uh, the approach by Navrenko, uh, uh, Lavrenko, sorry, Victor Lavrenko. I will give you the references. I'm sorry, I'm not here because I'm using different slides. Uh, I had uh, this problem, but uh, now let's see what is the idea. Okay, so basically D is uh, the document and what I would like to have uh, is uh, I want to classify either positive or negative documents. Here the assumption is that uh, all positive documents will get a score, okay, positive, so bigger or equal than one. All negative documents will get a score less or equal than one. Okay, so those are the negative documents, the ones with the minus. Those are the positive documents, the one with the plus. Okay. Now, the idea now is clear, right? The idea is I want to find out this line in this two-dimensional case that will separate uh, the two classes with the biggest uh, possible distance. Okay, biggest possible distance and then we have a minimization. That's a bit uh, maybe not uh, immediately intuitive, uh, but uh, keep in mind uh, that uh, the distance uh, of a point to a, play, to a line, in this particular case, uh, a line with weight w is 1 over w. So if you want to maximize the distance, maximize 1 over w, you want to minimize w. That, that's already an intuition. But again, let's see what, that, what happens. Uh, so what happens is that uh, this w can be indeed expressed uh, in that way. First observation, this looks like uh, 
centroids, right? Because basically, if you remove uh, alpha, the weight, uh, this is more or less centroids. But actually, this alpha parameter allow us to wait for uh, different weights. Okay, and in particular, not all the weights, not all, uh, sorry, for, uh, allow us to wait for different documents. And uh, here, the main observation is that not all documents will contribute to the definition of the hyperplane. What are the documents that can possibly contribute? Okay, in order to better understand uh, this idea, we need the concept of polytope. Okay, the polytope, what is the polytope? There is this nice uh, uh, intuition by, uh, again, Lavrenko. What you can do, you can, you can take an elastic belt and you put uh, an elastic belt around the minus point. And so what uh, will uh, result, the line that will be the contour of this elastic belt is actually the polytop. Okay. So you do the same for the, for the uh, plus class points, and OK, you've got the, the plus polytop and the minus polytop. Now, if we want to maximize the distance between the points, do we have to consider all the points in the plus and the minus class, or some of them? Intuitively, if you see the picture, it's pretty clear that you have to consider only the point uh, that are in the border of the polytope. What is in, inside is meaningless for the definition of this. The question is, what point? Those one, this one, this, this, what? But clearly, what is inside uh, will not contribute. Do you agree? So first observation. And th that, that's why most don't matter. Most of the documents uh, will have zero because uh, are the points inside the polytype that will not contribute to the definition of the hyperplane. Okay. The second uh, uh, observation that uh, is that any point in the polytype, so including the ones that are in the border, can be defined as a linear combination you see here, of the corner, namely of the points that are on the boundary, any point. So as an example, this point is not a document now, but can be defined as a linear combination of these, 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 and that. OK? This point is actually a point in the training set, uh, but again, can be defined as a combination of the point in the corner, okay? Any point. So, if this is true, what we want to find? We want to maximally separate, but so separation means that I have to find out in the current configuration, given this line, what is the minimum distance, right? Because I cannot uh, choose. What I can do, I can move, generate uh, different uh, hyperplane. But now I'm interested only in H plus and I H minus, namely the points that are the closest to our current hyperplane. OK? Good. So we are looking for the two nearest point in order to define the hyperplane. The two nearest point in the two polytop. OK, this is clearly the closest. Uh, again, here you can observe that uh, the closest is not a corner point of the polytope. But since I can express any point as a linear combination of the polytope, what I can do, I can translate this into this. OK, H plus is the combination of the positive document, linear combination of the positive document. H minus is the linear combination of the negative documents. Good, but what I want to do is I want to minimize this distance, because clearly this is uh, something that uh, 
I mean, if I take this point and this point, this is not going to separate the two points because this point will be in the middle, right? So this is the, the two nearest points are the ones that clearly will possibly define an hyperplane that will separate the two classes. Is this clear to everybody? So I need the minimum of what? Of this distance. And that's why you have this uh, minimum of W, which is the distance between the two closest points that can be defined as a linear combination of the document of the polytype in the class plus and minus the polytope in the class minus. Why minus? Because it's the vector difference between the two, right? I mean, here you can imagine coordinate. This is one vector, this is another vector, this is the difference, and I want to minimize this distance. Okay. Is this clear why I want to minimize this distance? Because clearly I can take also this point, okay? And I'm not, I'm not minimizing. But then the resulting hyperplane will not separate the classes. What, is the, what are the only points that will actually separate the classes? Are the ones that are the nearest one, right? Otherwise, I will not have any guarantee on the separation of the classes. Okay, another way to see it. Okay, I, and again, remember that now we have this vector that is perpendicular to our hyperplane. And so you remind that uh, A omega t plus b now is indeed the vector that is perpendicular, that will define the hyperplane. And so that's it, I have everything. If you want to see in a different way, in a different constructive way, that to me is less intuitive, but again, the important thing is that you understand the concept. If I give you a raw intuition, you have a point, you have a plane, this plane is, we want to find omega transpose, alpha omega transpose, a uh, alpha tra uh, omega transpose plus b equal to zero. The distance of a point to this plane is something that goes like one over omega, over w. Since we want to maximize this distance, subject to the constraints that I will actually classify properly, namely, I will classify positive the point of the positive class, and I will classify negatively the points of the negative class. This is the constraint. Otherwise, it's the same argument as before. I can take possibly this one, but then I will, I, my hyperplane will not classify correctly the points. Okay? So the, we are always subject to the same constraint. So if I want to maximize 1 over w, basically I want to minimize w. To me, it's more intuitive, this, this explanation by Lavrenko. But again, what is important is that you understand the concept. And what is even more important, we are not going to ask you to implement SVM. There are uh, thousands of libraries. But we want you to understand the concept and you, prove, you have an ins insight in proving why this concept works and how to find out this hyperplane. Okay. Questions? Okay. Okay, so what is the classification then? The classification is simply, I will compute the distance of a given point to the hyperplane. So it's basically um, is basically this one, right? Given this is this and these are the parameters of my hyperplane. This is the input, namely the new document that I want to classify. I will compute this function, and then I will take the sign. If the sign is plus one, it means that I classify the new document x, make of the x feature positively. Otherwise, I will classify it negatively. That's it. That's the idea. 
So basically, again, I'm uh, seeing whether I am above or below a given plane, a given line. Okay. Okay, this is uh, the, I would say, the more formal uh, proof, but basically it's the same idea. And you see, here you have something, this is the distance, why is twice? Because you have positive and negative distance. Okay, so you want to, you want to maximize this distance, which means that you want to minimize W, as we saw before. Okay. Hopefully Monday, if I will be able to recover at least one of my PC, we will see an exercise on, uh, also on this uh, support vector machine. Okay, so basically, the idea in the, say, uh, geometric proof is that I want to maximize 2 over the vector uh, w, which is basically minimizing uh, w over 2. Uh, this is the final formulation. We saw the minimization problem, but actually, again, you can see uh, in both ways. And so what uh, you want is you want to find out uh, omega and b such that, okay, is minimized. And this is a quadratic function, clearly. And so what you want to do is you want to use uh, any quadratic programming library in order to implement this final step. Again, we are not asking you to implement SBM. We are asking you to grasp the concept. And so to me, grasping the concept is uh, more than sufficient to understand the idea of, uh, I would say, Lavrenko explanation. OK, so to recap, you have a training set, the plus and minus documents. You want to calculate a maximum margin separating the uh, hyperplane, if it's possible to separate, and then we will discuss uh, in a few minutes whether it's not possible, what, if it's not possible, what, what can you do? So we saw that uh, in order to solve uh, this problem, you have basically to uh, um, uh, use a quadratic op optimization to find this plane. Okay, now a new point arrives. What is a new point? Is the, is the vector representation of a new document, x. You compute uh, f of x, namely the functional margin of this point, what is the functional margin? Is the distance from the separating point, and you take the sign. Okay, that's it. And so you can assign the class. Uh, is the sign is positive? Is the positive class? Is the sign is negative? Is the negative class? That's it. Okay, it could be that uh, the margin is within. Um, uh, Sorry, it could be that uh, the classification uh, function gives you a point that is here within the margin. Remind this margin is here. And so uh, what you can do is you can either ret return, I don't know. But if the margin to you, to your experience, or according to the problem, is too narrow, you have an, un an uncertainty region in which you can answer either don't know. So you have positive. Negative, I don't know, okay? Or if you want, since this is the distance to the uh, hyperplane separating the two classes that you have computed, you can use also this as a probability function, okay? Okay. So basically, here is a, a, a very simple exercise. You have the uh, three points. So what you do is uh, you uh, compute the lines uh, that connect the most uh, closed the 
the, the, the two points of the two classes that are close by. You connect them and then uh, by this line you can uh, compute the um, hyperplane. So basically this hyperplane uh, must pass in this point, 1.5 uh, 2, and thus uh, if you solve it, it will give you this plane uh, 2 over 5 multiplied by x plus 4 over 5 multiplied by y, minus, by y sorry, minus 11 over 5. Okay, this is very, very straightforward. Okay, so we have already discussed that everything works pretty well. No particular problem if I can easily separate the two classes. But what happens if this is not possible? Okay, okay what, what, what if the data are not linearly separable? Okay, one possibility is to allow few mistakes. Okay, like in this case, right? We, we, we had the... Um, okay, let, let's uh, first of all see the picture and then I'll go back. So you have those two pictures, you see. In this particular case, this hyperplane will allow you one mistake. You see the point, uh, the red point that uh, is in the blue region. While uh, in this other case, the hyperplane uh, will not allow you to make any mistake on the training set. But what is the difference? Are those linearly separa separable? Yes, they are. Indeed, there is a line. So why could you choose to do not separate it by a line, like in the, left, in the right uh, part of the picture? And you, you choose to introduce a mistake. Why? To have a bigger margin. To have a bigger margin. So you know in advance that you would have a, a, an error in the training set, but at the same time, the separation between the two classes, uh, if you consider that error as an outlier, as noise, implicitly you consider that error as an outlier as noise, the separation of the two classes is much bigger, and thus, as you correctly observed, the distinct, the, 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 the um, uh, the level of confidence on the decision made by the algorithm can be higher. Okay? So this is the trick that you want to use. Even because, as usual, you have this risk of overfitting. What is the risk of overfitting in classification algorithm? Too much on the, data. the problem is that uh, you use the train data in order to build the model. Uh, what can happen, what, what is the question you should answer? To what extent this training data is actually a good representative of the actual data? Right? This is not, not clear at all. It could be not clear at all. So in this case, you give a fantastic model that uh, clearly separates uh, the training uh, uh, classes, but at the same time, uh, the risk is that there is overfitting. Here, the risk of overfitting is uh, lower. Why? Because the separation of the two classes is bigger, but you accept one error since the beginning. Okay, so going back, uh, what, you, what you do actually is that um, you pay some cost for each misclassified, uh, you accept this cost. You pay the cost for each misclassified <coughs> example. Mm? Clearly depending on some of the constraints, so depending on how far it is from uh, meeting the mar margin uh, uh, requirement, basically. Okay? So this is the slack variable that takes into account uh, the fact that you are making uh, errors, and so basically it gives you a um, it takes into consideration uh, the penalty due to wrong decisions. And so the question is, how you can trade off between what? Between how fat can I do the, the, the margin? Can I make the margin? And uh, what kind of tricks I have to do in order to make this margin fat enough? So how 
misclassified point in the training set I would accept. Okay, and clearly the sum of those, penal of those penalties will give you an upper bound on the number of errors, okay. depending on how do you move it. But at the same time, will give you more simple and possibly robust solutions. Okay. Okay, what are the alternatives uh, for more classes? Okay, you have K classes. W what could you do? One option is to run, the new, you have a new point, you have different classes. Option number A, you will run uh, the different classifier to the new, this new point. You will get a number assessing the confidence of the classifier with respect to that new point, and then you will select uh, the classifier providing you the highest confidence. Okay? So that, that, that's a standard option. So you build the end classifiers, you give a new point, you calculate uh, the confidence of this new point with respect to all the classifiers for the different classes, and you select, uh, you assign the class on the basis of the classifier providing you the highest confidence. Another approach is basically is one versus one classifier. What is the one versus one classifier? Basically, what you do is the following. You run, is this uh, a circle or a square? And uh, whenever you, you, you run all the possible alternative classes, uh, you will get an answer, right? And at the end, you will select uh, the, um, uh, you will choose the class that is selected by most of the classifier. So assuming as an example that you have You have three classes, triangle, square, uh, sorry, circle, and square, and then a new point arrives, and then you will have a square against a circle, uh, sorry, triangle against circle, triangle against square, and circle against square. Okay, every time you will get a winner, so assume that this is the triangle, this is the triangle, and this is the square, so since two classifier gave you the triangle, this new point is classified as a triangle. Okay, those are the two main options. Okay, while this uh, in general clearly involves uh, building uh, a lot of classifier, uh, uh, if you have k classes, you have k multiplied k minus one divided by two, so basically you have all the possible options. Um, the time for uh, uh, training the classifier can actually uh, decrease because uh, those are most simple um, and also because the training set is much smaller. You are not considering all the data set but only a given class. Okay? Okay, good. A um, few observations on what happens or what could happen in, in the real world. Okay, this is actually a matter of uh, experience. Uh, <laughs> you have to make your experience. You have to try and to do experiments. And uh, okay, as an example now, uh, we are in the fantastic world in which for each document we, actually give, we have a given class. Good. This is actually not easy and we already discussed it. We are in the fantastic world in which uh, the noise is very limited, and this is actually not easy. You are in the fantastic world in which all the documents are uh, more or less formatted in the same way, namely you have the same fields, the same uh, structures, and this is actually not the case. As an example, dealing with uh, basically filtering the documents in order to have a common collection of documents with the same properties is, is not tri uh, trivial at all, okay? Okay, so what, what uh, can we say? A, there are many commercial applications already available. You do not have to reinvent uh, the wheel unless you need it or you, you are doing it for your own research. There are a, a number of uh, options and there are millions of open source options, okay? Uh, 
Uh, a lot of uh, classifier uh, uh, application uh, are uh, available for, te for test classification for all the purposes. And why is this important? Why maybe the text classification for a government department is completely different from uh, internet publishers? Because the structure of the document could be, in principle, completely different. And we already observed that you have to take this into consideration in order to, to solve a lot of specific issues of the collection. Okay? Uh, indeed, in many, cases, in many cases, exploiting a domain-specific test feature allows you to improve significantly the effectiveness and efficiency of the results rather than just try another algorithm. Okay? Our approach as technician is to start trying a number of algorithms uh, in search for the optimal results. Okay, this is one option. We have definitely to explore this option. But there is another option is to consider the, uh, uh, the uh, specific characteristic of the domain as suggested in this point. And then again, is to some, this is to some extent something we already discussed at the beginning of this uh, class. If you understand the structure of the data, uh, this allows you, in many cases, to get uh, good classification. Even if apparently, and this is why, as an example, there is now this new uh, master in uh, data science, uh, there is a significant weakness by, by the vendors of uh, solutions, okay? Okay, so to me, a good data scientist is also somebody that uh, not only knows the algorithm, but is capable to grasp meaning from the data simply having a look, observing it, the data from different perspectives. So my suggestion is to invest on this if you are interested in in, in data science. Okay, what kind uh, of classifier? F the main question is, what is the quality and also the quantity of your data set? Okay, how much can you rely on a good uh, training set which allows you to build a reliable model? Indeed, the main issue, and we observed it uh, another time, when? Do you remember what, what, when we discussed that it's difficult to evaluate the performance of a system? And to some extent, it's the, the same problem. When we were like, talking about designing uh, a search engine. Perfect. When, when we were th uh, thinking about how to evaluate the performance of a search engine, we discussed that uh, we need uh, a collection of documents, queries, but what is more difficult to get is the relevance of a query, uh, 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 of a document for a given query, right? That's something that is tough to obtain. Okay, similarly, it's difficult to obtain uh, declassification of a given collection uh, of the documents in a given collection. Okay, clearly, uh, w w what kind of uh, uh, data you could you have? Uh, you have, uh, or categories do you have? Uh, you have none, none, very little, uh, a lot, a huge amount. Depending on those, uh, uh, on, on the kind of, on the quality of the data that you have, you have to design the right classifier. In some cases, you don't have labeled data. And this is actually uh, something that opens quite often. So to what extent you can build uh, interesting uh, uh, information retrieval tasks when you don't have labeled data. One option is to use rules which basically observe the data and will assign uh, uh, a category, okay? a label. So as an example, if uh, wheat or grain and not wool or bread, then C equal to grain. That, that, that's one example of uh, rule. Um, in practical cases, uh, the rules are much bigger than this one. 
so you have those rules engine, maybe you have heard about uh, rules engine uh, before. Um, they can use very sophisticated uh, uh, query languages, uh, so you, you have much more than Boolean expression and you have uh, also numeric scores giving you uh, insights about the confidence of the rules uh, regarding the uh, associated uh, uh, label. Okay. Okay, so okay. Um, anyway, I'm not expert enough to say <laughs> how much this is uh, uh, applic applicable in all the contexts. Uh, honestly, but the main message here is that either that you do it manually or you have a rule engine. Anyway, classifying. Uh, sorry, obtaining a good training set in which you have label for each document is a particularly uh, time-consuming uh, task. Okay, this is an ad another example of a very, of a much more complex uh, rule engine. Uh, Okay, I think I will go forward on those observations when we will do the, um, say, practical exercise. What is my, my, my idea that actually was ready? Um, the idea is to uh, show you how to both use already available data set, and as an example, we will use NLTK, which is a library by Python, or build up a new data set, uh, downloading documents uh, from the web. And what I would like to show you is how to build very simple proof of concept, uh, Boolean retrieval methods and uh, score uh, and, and uh, methods based on, uh, sorry, on vectors, and to evaluate the performance of those methods with respect to the equivalent results on uh, a reference uh, engine like Google. Mm, this is the idea. So ne next, maybe Monday, hopefully, if I will be able to fix my PC, we'll go, we'll go through this, uh, um, this exercise. Questions? Okay. See you on uh, Monday. <laughs>